so we're going to talk Seventh Rise to start with a little bit. So um, I think let's go back to the beginning. Um, and maybe yeah. even like before the beginning, um, because I know kind of before you set up Seventh Rise, what, 10 years ago now, is it? Or something along those lines? Oh, it must be getting close. Yeah, I reckon it's eight or nine maybe, yeah. Yeah. So before that, you were a builder. And yeah. I hope it's fair to say that, um, you know, you were kind of perhaps a bit stuck, feeling a bit directionless and kind of purposeless in your life. So how did you go from kind of there to moving to, uh, you know, cottage in the middle of nowhere in Cornwall and starting Seventh Rise? So, uh, yeah, I just I'll rewind. I sort of grew up on my grandparents' farm up in Lancashire um, and sort of deeply fell in love with, with nature and the outdoors. You know, we were always playing down at the stream and building dens in the hay bales and finding bats and mushroom picking and mm. all of that sort of stuff. So I kind of had that that kind of upbringing, um, started fishing when I was about five, which is kind of my first love as well. Uh, and then, you know, life migrates a little bit, did some traveling and, and studied marine biology at university. But then then I sort of felt like I, I sort of basically I'm quite good as a builder and I'm quite dexterous and good with my hands. Uh, and I started walking down a path that I sort of described wasn't really my path to walk down. Uh, there was plenty of signposts um, telling me, you know, we all got those questions and we have those doubts about, is this really what I should be doing with my life? Um, and ultimately that kind of went on for a few years. And the, I guess the worst thing was I was actually quite good at it. You know, so you get more work and you get reputation for yourself and you get more money and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it kind of culminated in um, I was diagnosed with colon cancer when I was 27. So that really was was the blessing in disguise that allowed me to kind of press pause on life. You know, I had had uh, uh, emergency surgery. I had six months of chemotherapy. Uh, I was kind of out of action for about a year. And it allowed me a lot of freedom of time to think about what I wanted to do. And I made some some harsh decisions, really. I decided I never was going back to building again. Um, I wanted to pursue my passions, uh, the things that, you know, and I really kind of went back to that kind of childlike state growing up on the farm. And I just decided, right, I've got to find find somewhere that's disconnected and wild. Uh, and I want to try and run courses or give experiences to people that have you know to to be able to give experiences to people to for them to be able to feel and learn what i had felt and learn like with enjoyment and fascination mm -hmm. um you know when i was a kid uh and so seventh rise was born found a little mm -hmm. cottage in the middle of nowhere it was dilapidated took me about a year or so to kind of renovate it and you know with every every good path even a wrong turn comes in useful sometimes mm -hmm, yeah. um and yeah renovated it and that was the start I, I was running off pure passion no money at the beginning it was it was just it was the rawest and most difficult but looking back now probably the best time that there ever mm -hmm. was in, in that business so yeah we do um we do canoeing foraging fire lighting digital detox um yeah all of the kind of wild skills and uh and it's fantastic it's for any there's no no experience necessary it's for kids families stag do's women anyone that wants to come and just get a little bit wild uh and we're also lucky enough now that the market is coming towards us in so many different ways you know uh people are so more they're so much more aware of ecotourism, mm. their, their carbon footprint, doing, you know, less, less impact activities, mm. connecting with nature more, connecting with their family more, all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah I didn't start with a business plan, but it's turned yeah. out quite nicely. No, I think it's, I think that's the, like, you know, that's the bit, I think with your story, there's, there's like an inherently kind of spiritual nature to it. Like, you know, kind of almost at that, like following that thread, that little like thread following curiosity or joy, or, you know, even the fact that you, you know, you, you didn't get like a list of like, you know, 10 steps to being spiritual. Like, you know, number one, move to a cabin in the woods, like, you know, yeah. and then, yeah. you know, 
um, feeling to nat nature and connect with the trees. To, you know, you kind of just like, you followed that instinct almost, it sounds like. So, yeah. you know, like what, what do you think that thread is? Like what is, what is instinct? Like, you know, and, and it so often happens, doesn't it? Where it has, it, you know, unfortunately we have to get to like a crisis point or, you know, the help has to put the brakes on or whatever for us to wake up and, and realize like, you know, what is, what is that instinct? Do you think, what, what led you back then? I think, well, I think for everyone, it's very individual. And that's why spirituality is so personal. Mm. You know, everyone's on their own little journey. Mm. Um, and I think when you look at instinct or, or intuition mm. or, or even to a certain degree, interest, mm. uh, one of the tips that I could probably give to people out there is um, you are already interested in certain things and you're already not interested in other things to a certain degree, it's almost beyond your control. So, you know, it's less of a conscious decision of, like you said, oh, must go to the woods, must do X, Y, and Z. The more you remove that, that conscious thought of what you think might be a great plan or a great idea, actually remove that and you will naturally return mm. to the things that you're interested in. Like, I'm not interested in like knitting or, or like <laughs> cycling or or do you know what I mean yeah and so it's like almost it's like a self-awareness thing of mm. almost like auditing yourself and recognizing that you should sort of get out of your own way mm. that there's you know return to those things that you find joy and all of the primal stuff you know mm. so uh, I think meaning is another really 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 interesting emotion to mm. kind of dig into yeah. meaning is often i kind of describe it as you're in a place where you're testing you're you're safe enough you're in your comfort circle enough but you're right on the edge of learning something mm. new progress like making new steps in life mm. and, and it manifests itself in a, in a physical feeling and we all know it's that it's I often have this, um, I think it manifests itself most often in conversations with people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you click with someone, when you're having a conversation and you're getting deep into something and you have that feeling of joy and excitement and intrigue and you want to learn more from what they're saying and you've got your own stories to tell, that's meaning for me. And that's when mm -hmm. you're right on the edge of something. So if you could be aware of what that feeling is and mm. when it's coming up around different conversations, different topics, you should then, that's when your consciousness, you, you should then consciously think, Oh, I think I need to mm. take a few more steps down this road. Yeah, The lean in. I love the phrase lean in, like yeah. leaning into that feeling a little bit. It's, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's why do you think, why do you think we find it? Because we make it so hard for ourselves, don't we? We like, you know, we make it more complicated than it is. And, you know, like, why, why do you think that is? Is it just fear or, you know, what's, what's the barrier, do you think? I think fear is a big player. I think fear is hugely misunderstood as well. Um, mm. In what way? Know, well, I, so I, I've given a lot of talks around, around fear in particular. And what's really interesting is, you know, for anyone listening right now, everyone recognizes that fear can be one of the things that holds us back. Mm. If I told you to go and get a pen and a piece of paper, write down and write down what the definition of fear is mm. like off the bat, most people would actually struggle. If I, even mm. if I gave them half an hour, they'd struggle to get close to mm. if you then looked up what the definition was. And the definition of fear is it's an indication that there may be danger. Mm. okay so that involves two things one it's an indication it's not a dead cert mm. and that 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 there may be danger okay so mm. it's twofold um and the indication is really interesting so that's the differentiation that you're looking for you need to investigate more to see if that fear is actually mm. protecting you love it yeah right because it can fear like mm. we might be fearful of stepping too close to the fire we might be fearful when we're standing too close to the edge of a cliff in a physical sense i mean and that fear is 
perfectly well placed. It's an mm. indication that there may be danger. Mm. So it's alerting your senses to, is this something dangerous or is it not? I need to investigate. Mm. But without that, that sort of deeper understanding of even what the definition or, or even what fear is trying to tell mm. you to do, yeah. it's actually a really useful um, mm. emotion. Mm. You know, so for me, fear is sometimes it's right and sometimes it's wrong and the point is you've got to figure out which which is most applicable mm. um so you know maybe you're making a business decision and you're really fearful of you might be putting all of your life savings into this brand new business it might be a terrible idea mm. but it also might be the the feeling of fear might be saying well why don't you investigate more why don't you learn more why don't you do more research more mm. work harder to then understand that new business more do you see what i mean mm. so it's mm. fear is never the thing it's a precursor yeah. sometimes it's right sometimes it's wrong mm. um but yeah if mm. you just because it's actually a it's a horrible feeling mm. but it's not that dissimilar from excitement you mm. know it's, it's adrenaline Mm. it's uh you know it makes us feel physically in a certain way mm. um and and i think a lot of people feel it they're not educated in it they don't know what to do you get fight flight or freeze mm. and a lot of people i think then just just don't manage to get beyond that because they're not understanding maybe i need to do more learn more but it's always an indication of danger Mm. So find out what the danger is, find out if the indication is right or not, and then, but keep moving forward, mm. but certainly yeah. don't allow yeah. fear and to I overcome you. There's that element of, um, of just trust as well, because like you said, you know, there's no wrong turns, like somehow the threads tie together and, you know, the building which brought you to tears and, you know, felt like a rut for you turned into a really useful training for, you know, for what you're doing now. So there's like that element of trust as well, isn't it? Um, and I think like, uh, you know, as, as we've discussed a few times before, you know, there's, there's an element to the kind of well-being industry and the outdoor industry in a sense, which is just, just gets clouded in fluff you know there's just there's a lot of guff going on in the in the well-being industry and you know I kind of think you know if I think about my sort of my my brush with cancer last year and kind of coming out of that and I was just raging at the kind of the insincerity that, <laughs> that goes on and the you know the lack of validity in the well-being industry in particular um, you know what, what we love to do is kind of put labels on things or you know box things up which are like inherently wild or free or what you know what about our wellness and I wonder why you think we do that and I I sort of I was thinking about it earlier and I was thinking is it just like a like a dualistic view of these things so like you know it creates separation between me and nature and me and well-being to kind of to do this you know to to give things label labels and you know I wondered what your what your thoughts yeah. on that um hashtag world swimming by the way <laughs> 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 I think there's um, there's a few things. So one thing that I've definitely noticed, you know, because we we, um, we run experiences in the world. We have about a thousand people a year come through. So we've probably had close to 10,000 people that have come through the business now. Some of them are there for a um, canoeing course. Some are there for a uh, spiritual adventure. Some are there for a complete change in their life where a few people turn up in a right old mess. Uh, <laughs> and some people are there for a stag do, you know, uh, they yeah. weren't going to choose it. Steve's stag do was on, they just turned up. <laughs> yeah. But I can, I can tell you a few patterns I've noticed mm -hmm. over the years because you'd have to be an idiot not to spot them. <laughs> um, the first one is uh, around the wellbeing industry. Um, we often identify that we need to maybe be a little bit more spiritual or be look after ourselves more, de-stress, whatever you want to call it. Um, in order to do that and go on a genuine kind of spiritual, personal journey, um, things have got to get quite raw. You've got to get quite honest. Uh, it's often very difficult. You've got to face maybe things from your childhood, maybe things about yourself that you don't particularly like. Uh, and if you're actually not at that stage yet, you've got this part of your brain which says, yeah, spirituality, need to get into this, becoming quite trendy. And then you've got this other side of your brain which says, oh, not sure we want to go here. This is sounding <laughs> quite scary. Mm. Um, 
and the kind of the bullshit bit of sp- spirituality or wellness is is really just so that people can put their lycra on go to yoga and then that's what they're going to show everyone it's like don't look at me look at this mm. image of mm. i'm a yoga person i'm a i'm a meditator i'm a mm. whatever but what they're really saying is i'm absolutely petrified if you mm. actually look at me yet the next part of their journey is often they've got to look at themselves everyone else has got to look at themselves and they've got to get down to the truth of the matter before they move on you know because we've all got we've all got issues we've all got you know whatever that's what mm. your spiritual journey is so that pattern is really obvious to me um Mm -hmm. i can smell it a mile away and there's a massive financial upside in that Mm -hmm. selling someone an Mm -hmm. identity of a yoga or Mm -hmm. or a you know i've been on a retreat in Mm -hmm. portugal and it was all you know vegan food or whatever yet they go home to their lives and they they don't really like and they Mm -hmm. you know they've got their issues still and their relationships might be broken or whatever but as long as they can kind of tell everyone Mm -hmm. that that this is who i am you know Mm -hmm. look at this not don't look at me Mm -hmm. so that I would say is the biggest distinction, but actually maybe that's just the start for people. Maybe they've got to go through a little bit of that and, and, you know, baby steps. And then eventually they'll maybe get some confidence, have the right instructors in front of them, have the right experiences, meet someone else that's at a similar part of the journey, you know, and then it, they'll, they'll have the opportunity to go a bit deeper and actually do a bit, you know, like, go on their spiritual journey a little bit more Mm -hmm. so um it's all part of the journey but i can certainly see certain companies cashing in on stuff like that and you know it's just the way it is that's what Mm -hmm. life is but um yeah is it it kind of like the same in in sort of the outdoor industry too you know kind of i guess like i guess it's it is safe like you say if you create a little box around things it is a nice safe space to kind of dip your toe into isn't it you know to you know to 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 test out and then perhaps it you know is a doorway then to to deeper meaning to deeper connection to you know wellness being self like or you know that that deeper connection within and then yeah. I guess in in the outdoor industry the deeper connection to nature or kind of you know both being the same in at the end of the day kind of thing well we've we've um when i first started the business the first couple of years I was like high on passion Mm. for, Mm. I changed my life. I, you know, I'd, I'd had some of the most meaningful and and deep and interesting experiences of my life, the Mm. cancer thing, Mm. the mortality, you know, meeting your mortality thing, uh, 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 the love and the connection that you find off the back of that, because life just becomes so raw. You haven't got any room for all of the, the fluff that kind of mm. takes up most of our lives. It was just, you know, it was hardcore intensity of life. You know, it was mm. very full focus, which was kind of aw- awesome. But then off the back of that, I was just thinking, wow, you know, I've returned to, I've returned home. You know, I've gone home to, to who I am and what mm-hmm. I want to do and, and my path. And, and I was actually looking back now, I was, I was a bit too forceful in wanting everyone to come on that journey with me. I was too forceful wanting to change people. Mm, And I found the answer. I've got the answer. Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. Yeah. Why are you following me? It's too much. It's Mm. too much for people. And actually it puts people off. Mm. And, and what, what we realized was less is more, you Mm. know, so I don't have to define, um, anything for anyone i don't have to define where you are on your spiritual journey i don't have to define you maybe you just want to come for a canoeing experience and maybe a seal will pop up next to the canoe or maybe you'll walk through the forest and come across a deer or maybe you'll have a conversation with your best friend around the fire and you've not Mm. really had a conversation with them for five years you know a proper conversation Mm. um and actually I didn't need to do anything. I just needed mm. to get out the way. I just, I just orchestrated a really cool space with a tree house and a cool mm. cottage and a few activities. And actually the less I defined it as like, this mm. is going to be a life changing experience for you. Mm. Yeah. I, I allowed people to be at whatever stage they were. Mm. And actually you just get so many more results because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, a, I'm just a huge fan of nature. And I think we're all, 
we're all just primates that are wearing, you know, Gucci and Prada and Adidas <laughs> and, you know, with status of this job and that job and I'm in this club and that club. And, you know, we're just primates. And, and actually we return to the place that's why nature gets everyone in the end. I mean, who doesn't love, who isn't captivated by watching David Attenborough, you know, show some amazing thing about nature on planet Earth. Just gets everyone, mm. you know. Um, so actually, the more I moved out of the way and just mm. create the space, but let the people fill it with mm. whatever the hell that they've got on their mind or wherever mm -hmm. they are at their journey. Mm -hmm. And and that like 10 X our, our actual outcome. So mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. removed everything off the website about, you know, we still do retreats and various different things. Uh, but ultimately we just let people define themselves now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And the results are just mega. Yeah. And it seems like you've kind of, done a similar thing that sort of thing or you've let the seventh rise do a bit of that in its own way too so you know kind of um i know that you've got like the amazing izzy and uh, like a team kind of holding the reins of seventh rise and i think you know i remember us having a conversation a while ago where you said you know you felt like seventh rise was outgrowing you in a sense and like your curiosity was being pulled in other directions so yeah i think there's like there's there's a spiritual nature in a sense to to allowing Seventh Rise to be its own like entity, like you know, for Seventh Rise to grow organically and just like do its own thing and to not become, you know, the the Tom Hunt show kind of thing, which I yeah. guess in, like in the charity sector that happens so much, like you know, with, with founder syndromes and things like that. Um so was that like a was it a conscious like decision for you at the start of Seventh Rise to, to know that that was going to be part of the journey? Or again, was it like an instinctual, you know, as it kind of evolved? So did you arrive at the point where you were like, ah, oh, I'm going to, you know, set this thing free to be what it is so that you could follow other threads of curiosity? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't always necessarily to follow other threads. Um, but so on a practical level, I knew that I want to, a lot of people said to me, oh, why don't you make a CIC, a community interest company, mm. or why don't you register it as a charity and stuff? And we registered as a limited business because I believe in being the master of your own destiny. Mm. You know, so I didn't want free handouts or, or, or charity donations or anything like that. I wanted to try and build a business that was, uh, valuable in its own right mm -hmm. you know um i also wanted to do that because the truth of the matter is that i'm just not interested in money mm. it just isn't my primary driver um and i was much more interested in the people's experience mm. you know and we grew a family at we've got a thing called the seventh rise tribe it's probably got maybe 30 or 40 people in it. It's a Facebook uh, group that we've got of various different people that have come and pushed a paintbrush around and mm -hmm. helped out, you know, build and, and maintain the place, the venue. But it was always based on that kind of family atmosphere. And, you know, the main drivers, there's probably three or four of us in the main business, um, the owners, operators, you know, management, instructors and stuff. Uh, slightly wider is about six or seven, but the main core is like three or four of us. And um, and it's just it's just mega. It doesn't it's not run like a company someone else got hold of it who's much better at business they could probably make much more money out of it and maybe then there's an argument that says they could make it possibly more you know maybe there's three venues and maybe it's more impactful and all that sort of stuff but i've always been really organic with it mm. and i was just interested in those connections because it's just i think after my cancer experience i was just more interested in what life was than what numbers were or, or profit margins i was i was interested in you know the texture of the experience mm. you know uh, of building stuff and seeing people in the space that you've created mm. have sometimes life-changing experiences and and creating you know like izzy's been with us for a number of years now she's general manager she's mm. she's going to be coming on you know buying into the business so she's got some skin in the game for next mm. year and 
and we all see each other as just amazing and and mm. super valuable cogs mm. in this thing that's all it's it's outgrown all of us you know it's all mm. beyond it's beyond all of us individually mm. now so mm. yeah i mean i i've got you know i'm starting a family this year my mm. wife's pregnant and stuff yeah, which is amazing and and we've moved like to follow her dreams a little bit you know she's mm. a flower farmer and a florist and so we've mm. started a flower farm up and you know so that's kind of taking my day-to-day -day stuff uh, at the moment which is great mm. and I'm always looking at opportunities that you know we've got some fields and we're looking at a bit a bit of woodland and maybe there's seven fries number two mm. you know around here or um but just keeping it organic's good you've always got to have that kind of slight the practical element to it as well because mm. i see you know otherwise go and be a monk and just live in a cave or something mm. <laughs> uh you know you've got to try and balance the practicality with yeah. it but uh i'm just i'm interested in lifestyle mm. and i i'm not i'm not so much specifically you know need to go on a retreat need to meditate every day need to x y and z there's probably a, i could probably do a bit more of that and it would be <laughs> beneficial but <laughs> it's um you know i'm more about like don't get yourself into a rut that requires all of that stuff mm. to balance your life you know like mm. oh here's a bit of my life that i really hate so i need to balance it with mm. a retreat and a, a x y and z over here so i'm how, much how more lifestyle do you do that personally is it like is it intentional check-ins for you like do you like is it just staying connected like to your own truth or you know what how do you stay on track with, with that sort of stuff think you feel it in your body like listen to the signposts everyone knows this mm. everyone deep down knows when they're on the right path or not mm, yeah um you know your body will give you your mind gives you signposts first that you you can quite easily ignore your body gives you signposts that you can't quite easily ignore you know illnesses and stresses and mm. all of that sort of stuff and it yeah. almost and actually there's there's something quite valuable sometimes you have to almost break you have to get mm. to that stage where you're so infuriated and like hate mm. your life so much that's <laughs> actually i actually recommend that to people i'm like keep going mm. go harder go faster down this because mm. otherwise you're just going to live in no man's land forever mm. like yeah it can feel so like when someone is in that space i think it is one of the most exciting spaces to be in because you know from that from there it's like such fertile ground like amazing stuff only amazing stuff comes from rock bottom but you know yeah. saying that to someone in rock bottom they're like oh god like you know yeah. this, this feels shit <laughs> <laughs> it is it's painful it's painful but that's you know that's the yin yang of everything mm. it's the you know it's two there's two sides of every story there's two sides of every coin you've got to, you know everyone knows as well like this is part of that that kind of like f the fake spirituality like mm. almost just assuming that that life's great and then you ride off on some rainbow into the sunset it's like no no the beauty is in your pain mm, the so beauty true. is in your ah, in, in your difficulties so ah. you know it's it's odd like th that's where all the progress comes from mm -hmm. as well so and you in, put, that, you... in participating as well i think you know like so often you know we get lost in the cognitive side of spirituality or even outdoorsy stuff you know like um, yeah. a friend sent me this picture of this person like in their in their um pajamas like totally slobbing out on their bed like um you know saying like figuring out the you know the intricate details of the universe or something like that and they're like picking their nose and, you know it's like the the real grit the real experience the real spiritual you know the re the way to be spiritual is to embody spirituality is to participate is to is to get involved yeah <laughs> well imagine imagine this for anyone that's ever traveled before um the best bit about traveling, especially when you're in your 20s, is the fact that you don't have any money. <laughs> and all of all of that lack of finance makes you really resourceful mm. and it makes you and it makes you investigate and go on little adventures mm. and travel on random rickety old buses. Mm -hmm. And that's where the richness is. Mm. If you were to send a 21 year old away to go 
uh, uh, traveling in a different culture, mm. wherever, Asia, South America, Africa, wherever, and you gave them too much money, mm. they'd end up in nice hot showers and nice hotel rooms and very kind of bought off the shelf guides and experiences that actually aren't really that interesting so do you know what i mean like the the rawness and the difficulty Mm. is the best bit for you for the adventure that you want to call your life Mm. you know so i think first of all just assuming that life's always going to be amazing and great and easy and looking for easy easy and satisfied Mm. aren't in the same conceptual universe. If you want things to be easy, you won't be satisfied. And if you want satisfaction, it ain't going to be easy. Mm. You know, so like understanding, like you've got to chew on some shit. You've got Mm. like, and actually it's, it's the amazing bit, Mm. you know? So it's like really counterintuitive sometimes, Mm. but the more you can forgive yourself, accept yourself, you know, come to terms with, with those difficulties, the more you can step forth into greatness, you can mm. step forward into, into adventure, you know, mm. um, and, and just accept all that comes with it. And that is the ultimate kind of spiritual kind of a, adventure, you know, um, mm. I just think that's, that's amazing. Ah, so good. And I think we, we have, we've run out of time, but that was so, such an interesting chat. And just thank you so much for your, you know, your wisdom and, um, and your time, like really, really, really interesting. Um, is there any kind of like parting words you want to, uh, you want to leave us with? Um, um, no, just like good luck to everyone. <laughs> Bad luck to everyone <laughs> is what it is. Take it as it comes. Enjoy yeah. it all. Um, yeah. you know, and, uh, don't take life too seriously you'll never get out alive you know yeah Uh, it comes to an end for all of us you know so it's it's the journey from the maternity ward to the graveyard i hope Mm -hmm. you have a good time (laughs) i love it thanks so much tom and looking forward to like your you know your adventure with your uh, the arrival of your first child and and that sort of stuff and your new business so um look forward to um hearing more about that but yeah thank you so much really really good chat um, and thanks to all of you for watching. If you're joining the morning meditations, I'll see you. Um, <laughs> are you in a sauna? Someone says. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in uh, our, our little. Um, this is our bedroom, actually. It's, um, <laughs> in, in the, the eaves. bedroom, not a sauna, all right, guys? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'll see. Um, I'll see some of you tomorrow morning, eight a.m. When we've got a, a guest um, a meditation teacher tomorrow morning. But thanks so much, Tom. You bloody legend. Love um, you. See you soon and take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.